This next story is about two sisters in their little shop on St. Mark Street during the halcyon days of the punk rock era. Fast forward to today, and they are owners of a multi-million dollar cosmetics company. They've also proved you don't have to sell your soul to go corporate. This is Tish and Snooky's Manic Panic. Thanks to a punk rock sister duo, humanity has a little more color on its head. Meet Tish and Snooky Ben Elmo, founders of Manic Panic, a cosmetics and hair color company world renowned for its extreme colors and concepts. We've been called the Martha Stewarts of punk. <laughs> and we love getting blamed or thanked. <laughs> The first of its kind, its authentic punk roots and sensibility are, believe it or not, the very definition of an American success story. We've gone from being this tiny little shop, paying $250 a month rent and making nothing, to shipping all over the world. It really is the American dream, because we grew up really poor. I don't know where else in the world that, that could happen. With several million dollars in sales annually, Manic Panic products are everywhere, from hair salons to national chain stores like Hot Topic and Spencer Gifts. Products are a range of cosmetics like lipstick and eyeshadow, with names suited for their eclectic colors, be it Vampire Red, Green Envy, or Electric Lizard. Hair dye is their signature product, with colors like Electric Lava, Fuchsia Shock, and Voodoo Blue. Sorry, no browns. I, I don't fun. like brown. I, I don't know why I was born with dark brown hair. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It should have been pink. Not surprising. A lot of rock legends and pop stars use their products. Right now, um, Katy Perry has the most gorgeous hairdo, and it's our color. Mystic Heather. It's, beautiful, it's absolutely like, gorgeous. lavender color. It looks great. Rihanna has a red. mixture of reds. It's a secret. We can't tell you. <laughs> Actually, we don't even know because only her hairdresser knows for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy Lauper, of course, Cindy Lauper, and mm -hmm. Dennis Rodman. And, oh God, the list goes on and on. Tish and Snooky's punk sensibility is as authentic as their hair color is unnatural. We started out as singers. We were in various bands, including the original Blondie band, and people always liked the way we looked, so we decided we started a boutique, and it was the first punk boutique in America. Oh, well, our mother was and is our inspiration. She named it Manic Panic when we were trying to think of a name for our store. She was um, working in a mental hospital, and her patients would go into Manic Panics manic depressive ones sometimes. So she said, oh, why don't you call it Manic Panic? And she always supported us, always encouraged us in all anything we wanted to do. Nothing was impossible. When we decided to open the store, I had saved up $250 from working in a department store. And um, so she had the business training. <laughs> that was yeah. her business training. Yeah, sometimes we'd make you know, 25 cents a day, sometimes not one person would come in the store the whole day. No air conditioning. You know, it was, it was a great time to start a business and a great time to be alive because you could do stuff like that. Even though, you know, we weren't making a lot of money, we didn't have a lot of overhead because we were still living with our mother and... Um, our rent was $250. Can't beat that. Yeah. So we could just learn by doing it and make our mistakes, and I don't think that's so easy now. Still, even in the freewheeling days of 1970s New York City, they found out that not everyone accepted their looks. Oh, we were tortured because of the way we looked and the way we dressed and our hair color. I got punched in the face once. Somebody yeah, I, came I, over to me and punched me in the face. I had a guy in a, like this big fancy Rolls Royce pull his car over to the side, roll down his window and said to me, you know, 
You look absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. He had to like say it twice to make sure I was, <laughs> I got it. And, but nowadays, who is ridiculous now? <laughs> they put everything into it. Luckily, the department store she was working in was going out of business. So we were dumpster diving and taking all the mannequins out. And yeah. It was great. Right. We, we got, got all, all our fixtures. We still have the mannequins. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. Yeah. As the first punk-style boutique in America, Manic Panic soon became the mecca for the lifestyle. You know, we were all each other's audience. You know, when we were singing in Blondie, all the members of television would be there. You know, Ramones. Ramones and and we'd open for the Ramones a lot. Talking Heads. and Everybody was, was there. It was like a big, freaky family. Well, we were performers in one of the original punk bands in New York. We were actually so punk that we're the only band that never gets mentioned because our name was... To this day. To this day, <laughs> people won't mentioned. write about us because our name is too nasty to the put in writing. Fs. <laughs> we still are. We still play. We actually, they just booked us in Canada. And when we go over the border, we have to say we're the sick folks. <laughs> at our ages. Incidentally, the nun costumes were also their mother's idea. In 1989, a drastic rent increase forced them to close the shop. That actually became a blessing in disguise, for it forced the sisters to concentrate on the whole side sale of the business, building it to what it is today. Manic Panic's company headquarters in Queens, New York, looks more like a college dorm than a shining example of the successful capitalistic venture that it is. Employees wear the products proudly, hovering over computers while consulting with corporate vendors. What I got a kick out of is, for punk rockers, you started your business with just a hope and a dream. Most of your products are American made. You're like the quintessential all-American company. Exactly, <laughs> look at us. <laughs> Just, we look a little different. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's so funny how things get so distorted. People assume that they're the ones that are the real, you know, Americans or, or whatever. And you were telling me before that you've actually, you guys have done talks to uh, Girl Scouts? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Girls Club of the Lower East Side. And it's great that we're role models for young girls. That You know, we tell them, if we can do it, you can do it. And just what is the appeal to coloring one's hair with such bright colors? Sure, sociologists will have their theories, but Tish and Snooky say it's just simply fun. You know, it's a harmless way of expressing yourself. Anytime parents different. call us up and say, how can you sell this to young people? We always say, well, you know what? It's a lot better than drugs. It really does change people's lives. I don't want to make... I'll sound grand or something, but it, it really does. does. People, people it write does. to us all the time on how they changed their hair color and it made them more confident and self-assured. And, and happy. And, you know, we've, we've gotten letters from young girls, like, one, I remember one of them was, like, suicidal. Yeah. And it's just amazing. She dyed her hair and it made her happy. Manic Panic's boutique at their company headquarters in Long Island City is open regular business hours. They also have a boutique, appropriately enough, in Hollywood, California.